What's poppin' world? Back at it again with another video. Y'all tapped in with the Head of the Game podcast. Once again, we got a controversial discussion we got to talk about this morning. Y'all ready to title without further ado? Let's get right into it. I'm gonna be 100% honest with y'all. This is probably in me. This is probably me projecting. Um, maybe this is me generalizing. And uh, I'm gonna just tell you from my own personal experience and those that can relate to it, go ahead. Y'all know what to do. Um, this is probably the most conflicting as we're within a month away from the elections or, uh, you know, the polls to be uh, cast and all that. One of the most conflicting elections that I can remember in very recent memory, right? Um, and I'm going to tell y'all the reason why, at least for the for the black man, right? Because uh, this channel, I usually don't try to, uh, I guess, victimize or, you know, categorize black men. As y'all see through all my other videos and stuff like that, I do talk about black people. Maybe I even talk about black women, you know. Um, but never do I sit up there and try to put the victim card or race bait you know, uh, black men, because I understand that, you know, we got to be inclined to our reality. We got to understand the things that work against us, you feel me? And we got to have the prerequisites and the tools to be able to work against these realities, right? And there's no excuses in between. We either got to get it done or we going to get done, you feel me? Uh, survival of the fittest. It's been like that since the beginning of time, right? Um, but to get to the main point, I'm going to just go ahead and list off the things that I feel like are very conflicting in this election, right? So the obvious one side is Donald Trump. Uh, I'm gonna just run it down pros and cons. I'm gonna do the old school elementary style Venn diagram, right? Um, pros, cons, differences, similarities, right? So the pros and cons on uh, Donald Trump, I would say, far as the cons, when he said federal immunity for police, that isn't really after. That kind of speaks for itself. Um, now, as far as the taxes, taxes are very controversial, right? Um, who do you tax and why do you tax them? And an argument can be made on both sides. So this tax, when it comes down to taxes, I'm kind of neutral because you either tax the wealthy and that provides more funding for the government, but then the government is also a part of the wealthy. So they might put it into programs and stuff that you didn't vote for or things that you really wouldn't endorse. Or you keep everything on a marginal standpoint and just tax everybody along the same. Uh, it's kind of subjective of who pays more taxes because it's relative, right? Um, I think the 1% pays maybe close to half, half maybe, half, half of taxes, right? Um, but in the ratio of what they get back in comparison to themselves, right? Um, they might pay less taxes on a ratio standpoint, right? And if you give more of the money towards the corporations, the people that are um, pretty much employing everybody, and that provides more uh, funding for like labor or more, um, how can I say, uh, more funding towards, you know, advancing and putting their uh, company in a better, you know, just providing a better product, right? So taxes, I'm kind of wishy-washy on. Uh, I do feel like because Trump is a businessman, he's definitely, uh, uh, how can I say, like economically savvy, you know, very uh, uh, financially literate. So I'm pretty sure he'll put the right people in place to sit up there and put things in a direction where the, the, the economy will be able to thrive once again, right? Um, Keystone pipeline, get the oil field and stuff back working. So on and so forth. Now, the whole Project 2025 20, thing, 
it is a threat, but I'm keeping on. I think it's propaganda. I, I really don't think, even if he wanted to, that he has that kind of power. Now, I may be underestimating his ability to be able to implement something like that, but I, I just don't feel like that would go very far. <clears throat> right? So, that's my stance on Donald Trump. I just don't, I, I feel like there's certain things that negate other things that would be good. Right? Um, now, Kamala Harris, we already know her, uh, you know, as a prosecutor, you know, her history and stuff like that. Um, really don't need to get into do the super deep detail, but in the black community, it could be looked at as a form of self-hate. And now she sits up there and comes up with this low, this ploy like, oh yeah, I'm a middle class child and I know the struggle and my mom used to do this and do that and it's like it comes off disingenuous and I'm gonna tell you why right that's not where you're at now you're a millionaire tell me oh yeah we're gonna tax the billionaires but the millionaires are still gonna be good right all these politicians all of them will be all of them well off and for for her to come off like the one thing I'll give Trump is he's unapology unapologetically authentically himself right um he's not trying to sell you on a yeah you know i'm i'm with you guys like they f trump is more relatable because he's not trying to come down to where everybody else is at he's trying to bring everybody else up to where he's at right um messaging and stuff like that like i said it's all subjective, but I just feel like Kamala's standpoint definitely comes off uh, very um, just disingenuous. I don't like it. I'm going to keep it on. Now, she sits up there and, you know, she talks about taxes and stuff as well. And, you know, implementing more programs for housing and more affordable housing and stuff like that. And, and it sounds good. You feel me? I, I feel like somewhat of her intentions are in the right place. But let's not act like one is totally worse than the other. So where does that leave black men, right? Because uh, as y'all seen earlier uh, this week, you know, Obama, I mean, Obama, <laughs> Obama pretty much uh, lecturing a group of uh, black men on just basically saying like, hey, look, you know the status quo, you know what's at stake, um, you know the perception, uh, and basically just saying like he's coming he, he's trying to sit up there and basically just saying like don't allow the outside forces to pull y'all away from supporting a black woman becoming president right you know I mean there's so many things you could take that video and take it apart in so many different ways Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that, but uh, I'll just leave it at this, right? Where does that ultimately lead me? I'll say it really ultimately leaves me conflicted because I'm going to keep it under with y'all, right? <sighs> to not vote knowing that what the people, our black people, you know, did to get equal rights and stuff like that and... I feel like it would be a disservice to the ancestors and people in the generations before that fought for those rights for us not to exercise them just because we feel like they don't hold any power. No, people was getting holes down and dogs sicked on them and put to jail and beat down and brutalized and all this other stuff just for us to have an equal playing field. Of, and that's how powerful the vote is, right? So for black people to just be like, oh, yeah, I don't like either one. Nah, I just feel like you got to make a choice. Even if you vote independent and knowing that that independent don't have a chance of winning, exercise the vote because it's like people fight for those votes. So I'm going to give it on. I don't, I don't really have an answer. I really don't know who I'm going to vote for. Um, maybe I'll do a follow-up video uh, around election time. When I'm, when I'm ready to cast the ballot, maybe I'll give y'all maybe a final stance before I do that. But uh, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. More videos on the way. I'm